All right, and welcome to Factoring Quadratic Functions, Level 1. Now, if you're one of my students and you haven't done the factoring assignment, you need to go back and do that first because this builds on that. But with that out of the way, let's get to it. So we have here a quadratic function. In fact, I'm going to take it one step further. We have a quadratic function that's in what we call standard form. Okay, so what is standard form? It's when it's f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, so we just have a coefficient and then x squared plus a coefficient and then x and then some constant at the end. Now the way that you solve this is you actually use your factor. And when we find solutions, whenever we find solutions, what are we really finding? Well, our solutions are going to be our x-intercepts. And so my question to you would be this. If we take an xy-axis and we look at where uh, two values cross the x-axis or three values or four values. It doesn't really matter. My question for you is no matter where we have this x comma something, you know, x comma something, x comma something. It's called x1, x2, x3. doesn't matter. Whatever the x value is, what is the y value? Well, when you're on the x-axis, your y value is always going to be zero, zero. Zero. So no matter where I put a point at on the x-axis, when I'm finding my solutions or my x-intercepts, it's always where y equals zero. And so that's the big key that I really want to discuss. <clears throat> Not only y equals zero, but remember, another name for y is f of x. So you can set either y equal to zero or f of x equal to zero. And so let's go ahead and see what that looks like in practice. Okay, to solve this problem, we know we have a quadratic because there's an x squared. And we're going to set f of x equal to 0 in order to find the x-intercepts. And then what I have is x squared plus 5x plus 6. The way that I solve this is by factoring. <clears throat> so what is factoring? Well, I ask myself, what times what gets me x squared? And that would be x times x. And then I always want to break down my middle term, the 6, into the things that multiply to be 6. We know that's 1 and 6 and 2 and 3. And then I'm actually looking for the set of numbers that adds up to be 5. So like, what's 1 plus 6? 1 plus 6 is 7. I want two numbers that multiply to be 6 but add to be 5. What's 2 plus 3? Well, that's 5. <clears throat> so 2 and 3 are the two numbers that we're looking for, positive 2 and positive 3. Now this is factoring. But in order to find out where these values of x make this equation equal to 0, what I have to do is I have to take each factor, x plus 2, for instance, and I have to set it equal to 0. Why? Because 0 times anything will give me 0. Okay? And conversely, I also want to set x plus 3 equal to 0 because 0 times anything will also give me 0. So this is the process. I factor it. And then I set both factors equal to 0, and I solve for x. So x plus 2 equals 0. I go minus 2, minus 2, solving for x. And x is equal to negative 2. Here, I get rid of the plus 3 by minus 3, minus 3. And I get x equals negative 3. So these are, in fact, my two solutions, OK? Negative 2 and negative 3. So what you're going to do is go to your graph and go to the left 1, 2. Here, let's switch colors. Go to the left 1, 2. 2, and 3. Let's put a point right there, a point right there. Those are my x intercepts. Okay, and so then we want to say, well, what is my a value? Is it positive? We're not going to get into this too much, but you always look at the coefficient in front of x squared, which in this case is 1. It's a positive 1. But we just know that our graph is going to be this u-shaped graph that opens upwards. And that's all I really want you to do. So whenever you find your two solutions, all you're going to do is just draw a u-shaped graph going through them. And this is the shape of a quadratic. We'll get more into that later. Just get the practice of drawing the u-shape through the two x-intercepts or the two solutions. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do two more examples from this assignment. So let's go into our second example. OK, so let's give an example of how quickly we can solve this. We know that in order to solve for the solutions, we're going to set f of x equal to 0. And then from there, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and factor this. So I know that x squared will always break down into x and x. And then from there, I want to take my last term, 8, and I want to break it down into all of its factors. So I know that there's 1 times 8 is 8, and there's also 2 times 4. 
Now, which one of these pairs is most likely to get me to negative six? Well, it's gonna be two and four, but if I do two plus four, that gets me positive six. So in what way can I change the two and the four to get to negative six? And in this case, I'll make them both negative. A negative times a negative is a positive, and a negative plus a negative just goes more negative. So my two factors are x minus two and x minus four. Now, at this point, in order for this equation to equal zero, I have to set each factor equal to zero. And I simply solve for x. Plus two, plus two, and x equals two as one solution, and plus four, plus four, and x equals four is another solution. Or remember, our solutions can also be called x intercepts. <clears throat> so let's go to our graph, and let's go to positive one, two, three, four, and let's go ahead and put these two points. Here's positive two, here's positive, let me make that one better, here's positive two, here's positive four, and of course our a value is a positive one, so this graph, this U shape, will go through those points and be an upward facing U shape. <clears throat> That's all y'all have to do. All right, let's go to a third example, and I would encourage you to watch this one because this one will be the most difficult by far. Okay, here's problem 7a. Solve the quadratic function below. And what we know is that we want to take f of x and set it equal to 0. So I have 0 equals x squared minus 3x minus 10. And from here, I know I want to split it up into my two factors. x plus or minus something times x plus or minus something. Now this is where it gets tricky. Our c term, our final term that we want to break down is a negative number. That means that one of these numbers is positive and one of these numbers it has to be negative because a positive times a negative gives you a negative. And so that means we're not looking for two numbers that add to be negative three. We're looking for two numbers that subtract to be negative three. Okay, so what are my possibilities? Well, I have a possibility of a positive five and a negative two, a negative five and a positive two, a positive one and a negative 10, and a negative one and a positive 10. Those are all of my options, including one of the numbers positive and one of the numbers negative. So the question becomes, which pair will combine to be negative three? And let's just go through this. Five plus negative two is positive three. That's not what we're looking for. And negative five plus two is actually negative three. So these are the numbers that we're looking for. So that go, means I go to my factor and I write x minus five and x plus two, and those are the two expressions that I set now equal to zero. Okay, in order to get x by itself, I can add five and add five, and I get x equals five, and right here I can subtract two and subtract two, and x equals negative two. So notice, this time we actually have a positive solution, one, two, three, four, five, and put our point, and a negative solution, one, two, and it looks like our a value <clears throat> is still a positive one, so we know the graph opens up. And the secret is, for this assignment, everything's gonna open up. All right, I hope that these three examples help, and I'll see y'all in our level two video.